Welcome to the Science of Parenting podcast, where we connect you with research-based information that fits your family. We'll talk about the realities of being a parent and how research can help guide our parenting decisions. I'm Mackenzie Johnson, parent of two littles with their own quirks, and I'm a parenting educator. And I'm Lori Hangs, parent of three in three different life stages, launched college and high school, and I'm also a parenting educator. And today, drum roll please, ah. we are opening up season three and we are talking about my very favorite topic, temperament. I, could, I cannot believe we made it to season three without like, like you had to wait till season three to talk about it. Man, good job. Proud of you. <laughs> that I, You know, I was biting my tongue, sitting on my hands, all kinds of things. And I think in season one, we almost mentioned temperament and we both said, oh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so it's here. Now Lori can share all of her expertise and knowledge with us. All this good stuff you have in your brain, you're always like telling me about and tidbits you're sharing. And I'm excited to learn more and share more with everybody else. So temperament well, here we come here we come and i do have to say that it's not lori's knowledge okay <laughs> so there are some really cool temperament researchers and gurus and i just happen to be able to work alongside them in some cases read all their work stalk them maybe and i just <laughs> i mean i've loved them all for years and so now i get the chance to share their information so this isn't this isn't lori's knowledge. It's just Lori sharing, oh, the grand knowledge that they have with us. Um, and they're, and they're so willing to share it with us. I've been interviewing several of them over the last couple of weeks and hopefully we'll be able to even visit with some personally, but yeah, should we get You're started? You're maybe just the funnel through uh, which I'm that the, information has come into my life. So, I love that. I am the funnel. The funnel the funnel yes i love Are you it. ready awesome. to funnel i guess into other people's lives i'm so excited to tell everybody let's just let's get going <laughs> let's go all right so you may be wondering what that word temperament even means so mm -hmm. let's start there by definition according to mary rothbart and colleagues temperament is defined as the physiological basis for individual differences in things like how we react, what motivates us, our affect, our activity, some attention characteristics. And so in other words, temperament is our predisposition to how we react. It's how we have that initial oomph or that loudness or mm -hmm. that first response. It's inborn, it's genetic, and it's with us from the very beginning of life. I love what Mary Sheedy Kersinka says in her book, Raising the Spirited Child. If you go to a newborn nursery in the hospital, mm. children are doing all kinds of different things in their little cradles, right? Mm -hmm. No one taught them how to move. No one taught them how to cry louder than the person next to them. No one taught them to startle when they hear a loud noise. <laughs> it was all there. That's temperament. Mm -hmm. That's temperament. And I, and I think I remember one of the first when I was kind of like, riding your coattails on temperament classes. <laughs> I remember talking to you talking about temperament as a window to understanding. Um, but that at the very beginning of understanding that it's genetic, it's mm -hmm. what you're born with. It's not, you know, it's, it's kind of handed on the platter. Like this is what we get and we don't throw a fit. Um, and so we kind of go with that. But I do think kind of one thing we've commonly seen up, seen come up when we talk about temperament is this like, okay, so it's personality, um, mm. but it's not quite the same thing. So can you help, can you provide some clarity on the difference between temperament and personality? Yeah, absolutely. So we look at temperament because like I said, you can go to the newborn nursery and see temperament. Mm -hmm. You don't really go to the newborn nursery quite and see the personality. So the temperament is that foundation, that bottom level that we start with and mm -hmm. As we grow older, we have some patterns that emerge and some layers that come up on top of temperament. And so we start with intemper we start with temperament. We start with who we were born to. 
Mm -hmm. We start with the environment that we were born in. And then we grow when we developed and life experiences happen. And that's what builds our personality. But at the very basic bottom level, we started with a temperament. It's that predisposition, like I said before. We yeah. have this way that we're going to react to things. And then we add these other layers on top of that. It's always been there. And, and the thing is, we're all different individuals. We are mm -hmm. all born differently. And temperament's the same kind of thing. So it's everything individually about ourselves. It remains individual to us. And ultimately, we are responsible for our own behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So like you said, we get what we get. We don't throw a fit. However, our parents and our caregivers, they respond to us. And so they can shape their response to us. In which ways, as we grow and learn and develop, we can begin to feel our temperament, but shift our reaction. Mm. We still feel that temperament at the very bottom level, but as we grow and learn and our parents and our caregivers shape us, we then may react differently, even though inside our guts are telling us, oh man, that really makes me so frustrated. Yes. We we learn along the way and it shapes us. So do our caregivers appreciate our temperament? Do they try to understand us? Do they want us to behave differently? And if mm. so, how do we learn to behave tif differently? Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you were explaining that, you know, thinking about that difference between temperament and personality, I think of kind of in that infant stage. So when a baby is born, like you were talking about the foundation, the temperament's there. Um, and we know like this, my baby seems to cry a lot, right? Or they cry very loudly or they wake easily or mm -hmm. things like that. But then there is a certain point where we say to people around us, like they're re really starting to get a personality, right? Like, and so mm -hmm. there is a certain point. So we do at some, in some level know that it's just kind of defining it a little more as mm -hmm. that foundation. Um, so that was like, as you're explaining it, I'm like, oh, that's clicking for me so much. Uh, and then that last, those last few questions you asked, you know, as, as we think about our own temperament and as we think about the way we parent our kids with their inborn genetic temperament, not something they chose, just what they have. Yeah. Are we going to appreciate it so that our child feels valued and supported? Uh, you know, are we trying to squash it, which sometimes mm -hmm. feels like the natural response, like, oh, come on, suck it mm -hmm. up, or, you know, those kinds of things. We want to change it, but their temperament's not going to change. Um, and so something our writer Barb said when we were talking through this episode, she talked about viewing temperament as a gift, mm -hmm. um, with a big part of that being, when we see something as a gift, we tend to value it. And I was like, yes. Yes, Barb, mm -hmm. that makes so much sense to me. Sometimes my child's temperament is challenging to me. Um, you know, there's certain times and at certain life stages where a certain trait maybe feels a little more valuable or a little more challenging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if I try to see that temperament trait as a gift throughout, I'm more likely to kind of be able to respond positively and find joy, you know, even when it is the heat of a challenging moment, see some of that joy a little bit more. So mm -hmm. valuing those traits because they're born with it. And so our job is kind of to figure out how to help them navigate with them. And she explained this idea of leaving room yes. for them or giving them a space to experience their temperament. And I just could envision, you know, a child with a difficult temperament all of a sudden being given room or space to be spirited yes. um, or to be challenging and just having someone appreciate, wow, they have some strong emotions and some strong feelings. I want to give them room and I'm going to take this time to appreciate that because later in life or at a different stage of development, that piece of their temperament is really going to be an asset for them. And so I yes. love that she gave me this picture of a space and room for mm -hmm. their temperament to grow uh, and they're born with it. So we need to find a way to value it. And so I think as we, you know, we like to start out with this definition and that's kind of where we started right here. As we think of that definition of like those inborn traits and those patterns of how we react, understanding that definition with the thought of giving it space, like 
this is who my child is. I'm not going to change those parts of them. Mm. They're the patterns they're going to have. I'm going to give them space for those patterns and skills, um, which mm -hmm. I think I may be skipping ahead. That might be number two. Am I skipping ahead? <laughs> I, was like, oh, I can let there. you go with number two. <laughs> it's all right. So, so another tip, tip we have, and, and I love, like I said, I've been able to talk to several of these uh, people that will be referring to their resources and their books and their research. But in his book, Understanding Your Child's Temperament, uh, Bill Carey talks about how important it is for parents to understand their child's behavior by considering their natural genetic temperament makeup, which, uh, P.S., by the way, was given to them by their parents. <laughs> All oh, right. Here we are. So, <laughs> <laughs> learning to respond in a way that supports the child instead of from that perspective, how can I fix my child, mm -hmm. right? We know that challenging behaviors are frustrating and how children respond. I mean, gosh, it feels like sometimes they are pushing our buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. And so step step one is essentially remember is essentially it's we need to remember that it's possible we the parent genetically gave them that response. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's on me, right? Mm -hmm. And so the second step then is to begin to understand how can we be supportive of that natural tendency and how can we teach them techniques on how to essentially deal with what we gave them. Now, yes. one thing I want to quick share is that I was talking with one of the gurus last week and, and what they shared was that sometimes our response comes from a place of you're so much like me and I don't want you to hurt like I did. So yes. I want to change that in you. Mm hmm. Ugh, that, you know, and I can think about mm. times where, you know, there's a particular piece of temperament that, uh, that my child has, and I just know that I didn't value that in myself. And I, I can think about times where I may have really tried to change that because mm -hmm. all I could think about was how she was just like me. And that hurt me sometimes so bad to have that particular temperament trait. And oh. yes. so, you know, yeah, how can we be supportive of their natural tendencies and then teach them to deal with what we gave them. I think you made, whether it was an unintentional or just the wisdom <laughs> flowing out of you that like you talked about the, like the way I felt and that I felt hurt um, and those things because of other people's reactions. Mm -hmm. um, and so while our instinct might be like, Oh, I don't want, you know, if they have a similar temperament to us, um, you know, or even our like our co-parents, right? Mm -hmm. The 50, 50 there or their biological parent, right? That may, may or may not be you. Um, mm -hmm. but understanding, yeah, it's genetic, but the way that people react, the way we mm -hmm. react as parents, um, and the way we can help build those skills, right? We're not saying, um, so for example, you know, you might say like one temperament trait, um, is sensitivity. So how sensitive a child is, you know, to from their senses, right? To touch. I mean, yeah, touch, feel. I'm so bad at listening all five at once. You're good. No, you're good. <laughs> hearing, you're good. Hearing, sight, smell, taste, feel. There we go. Um, but how sensitive they are to that. And so if we tell our child like, oh, just like calm it down. It's fine. Like it's not that big of a deal, right? The line on the, on the socks or the tag in the shirt or the sound level in the room. Um, it might, our reaction might be to squash it, right? Don't be like, don't worry about that. Um, mm -hmm. But to change that reaction to be like, wow, you're right. It's really like, it's loud in here for you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and helping them figure out what they can do when they feel that way. So that our role becomes understanding that temperament. Like you said, step one is understanding it. And that maybe mm -hmm. it came from us. And step two, what skills and techniques can I get, like help you develop to navigate with it, right? I'm not gonna change your temperament, you're born with it. So what skills can we help develop mm -hmm. so that you can navigate successfully with it? Because a lot of temperament traits, like you said, we don't want that trait to go away, right? I want you to be persistent when you're adult. I want you to be able to do hard things. Mm -hmm. It's hard when you're three <laughs> and you're persistent about what you want because it's not maybe what I want. Um, yes. But I want you to have that trait as an adult. So I need you to help get skills to keep moving through there. So it's both nature and nurture. You're talking yes. about nurture. So when people say, well, is it either or? No, it's actually both. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what you're talking about. Nurturing their temperament is shaping 
using that environment to shape them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that, um, there's like, that's the whole podcast, age old question, nature and nurture and parenting. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Oh. It's both. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, we're not actually done. There's more research to share here, right? <laughs> there actually is. So, you know, sometimes we think children are, they're actually not intentionally trying to make mm. us mad, right? Mm -hmm. It is their temperament. And we talked about, right, there are no cookie cutter temperaments. There's no cookie cutter personalities. There's no cookie cutter kids, period. Mm -hmm. So it then becomes this idea that we have to choose, as parents. Mm -hmm. And so for years, as I was teaching temperament to parents, to educators, to child care providers, at the end of the session, <laughs> I would say, so guess what? Now, you know temperament. And because you know temperament, it's your responsibility. Who's and like, in charge. Yeah, I, I would make sure I gave them the evaluations before I said that phrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, first okay, evaluate, me. <laughs> right? Now I have to tell you, you know temperament, you're the adult. So mm -hmm. what are you going to do with what you know now? We have to choose how we respond to what we gave them. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yes. And the way that we see, like you said, seeing it as pushing our buttons, like, ah, you're just trying to, why are you... Like, mm -hmm. oh, your temperament, right? Mm -hmm. So you're responding to the world, right? Those patterns mm -hmm. of how you respond, they might look different than mine. And so maybe I'm not so understanding of it. Oh, yeah. We've, we've talked a little bit about this in brain development, that idea. Well, they're looking at me. They know. They know they're pushing yes. my buttons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, okay, but <laughs> well, more to we'll the story. come back to that. We'll come back to that, right? Yes. So here's another research tidbit for you. So this idea of learning to respond to the child's natural temperament is really honestly what the very first that I would call very first researchers that we're really basing this whole season off of mm -hmm. are Stella Chess and Alexander Thomas. And they were pediatricians and um, psychologists, and they, they, they talked about goodness of fit, and so they studied and studied their patients and their clients. And basically what they began to understand is that we all come with all of these different temperament traits. And so as they watched children and parents interact together, they began to understand that sometimes parents weren't really understanding where the children's behavior was coming from. And so our natural tendency is to you know, blame the child mm -hmm. or even possibly blame ourselves. And so as we look at temperament and we look at that fit to that natural, uh, that natural coming togetherness of adults and children and, it, and, and learning about temperament, it actually brings out the best in both of us. And so like you mm -hmm. said, a window I've, I've shared before in classes or whatever that I, I see temperament as a window. And as you learn about temperament, each step you learn, each temperament trait you learn about, all of a sudden it's like a little extra piece of Windex, right? Yes. Or glass cleaner. And all of a sudden Wipe you have this, this little hole of cleanliness in that dirty window and you can see mm -hmm. and you think, oh, I can see so much more. And so then you learn a little bit more about temperament and all of a sudden the interactions with your child are different. And so you clean off the window a little bit more each time you learn another layer of temperament. And so it honestly, understanding temperament can help us prevent behavior problems in children. Mm -hmm. And I think you, that point about understanding, right? The understanding mm -hmm. our child's temperament, um, which is what we hope we can help parents do kind of through this season. And that I am excited to dive into a little more in my own parenting with temperament. Um, but that understanding, and then you said a word earlier, uh, like we can prevent, but like we can anticipate challenges mm -hmm. when we understand their temperament. And we did like a little, I think this might've been the episode where we talked about temperament. We talked about anticipating meltdowns and mm -hmm. we're like, okay, we can't give you the whole picture of temperament in this one episode. So we're going to hold off but it can help us anticipate what those might be too. Yes. Season one, anticipating mm -hmm. meltdowns. That was in there. Definitely. And, mm -hmm. and it's that, and, 
anticipation, that anticipatory preventive piece of temperament that makes it so important. Mm -hmm. So very, very important for us to begin to understand because how much of our day is spent you know, racing around, putting out fires, uh, you know, mm -hmm. trying to, trying to fix things that have gone wrong. Well, if we can learn about temperament, we might actually be able to prevent more of that and yes. enjoy our day even more. And we've talked about the joys of parenting and, and being joyful. And, um, one other thing I want to share that Barb said is that when we can understand and appreciate our child's temperament, boy, it makes them feel like they belong. Mm. Cool. And Which, how like, we all want that for our kids. Ugh. Exactly. Exactly. We all want that for our kids. Mm -hmm. And I think of, okay, there was one research tidbit that you talked about um, when you're researching this episode that I, we didn't make into the, like we didn't get in our outline, but it was so good. I want I, like, do you have it? <laughs> the one I about do. Anticipating and <laughs> I do. I, I do. I do. So this actually comes from the study of the folks that are um, in, they created the temperament survey that I sent you to do on your children. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a bit. Mm -hmm. But they did a longitudinal study and essentially what they did, big um, HMO, they were looking at the temperament profiles of parents and adults and what they found, and I'm going to rephrase this after I say this sentence from the study. So the, the study is from Jim Cameron, David Rice, Greg Sparkman, and it's from the Preventive Ounce with Helen Neville as well and Kaiser Permanente. By sensitizing parents to their child's temperament and helping parents understand and manage temperament-related behaviors, anticipatory guidance, or what we're doing here, anticipatory guidance can encourage a positive parent-child relationship. Mm -hmm. So teaching- That makes me want to cheer. Like I want to like- ah! <laughs> So teaching about temperament ahead of time, can encourage a positive parent-child relationship. How yes. super cool is that? Well, when I think about understanding, you know, even just the basic level that I have, I haven't dove in, like gotten a chance to dive all the way into my kids' temperament profiles and things, but just the little bits that I do understand of like, okay, my, I tend to see that my daughter might be slow to warm up to something. And so sometimes people might interpret that as like, oh, she's just playing a game or, you know, like people might think, interpret that trait a different way. But me knowing that it's like, okay, we're walking into a new situation. I've under, I've seen this pattern in my daughter where she's slow to warm up to somewhere new. I can mm -hmm. anticipate that this might be hard for her. Mm -hmm. um, and so therefore reducing the challenging behavior, maybe when we get there or, you know, or at least I'm prepared for it. I'm <laughs> mm -hmm. um, instead of caught off guard. So like temperaments, just us understanding it is kind of recognizing those patterns and there's tools out there. Um, that can kind of help us do that, right? There are definitely tools out there. We, mm -hmm. We've we been having the opportunity to research back through these tools and review these tools. And so a couple of tools I, I uh, sent Mackenzie to work through were mm -hmm. at the uh, Kaiser Permanente Preventive Ounce. The Preventive Ounce was one, as well as at temperament.org, uh, Behavioral Development Initiative. So there's a couple of different places parents can look. And when you think about, you just made me have this picture in my head of we, we grab the diaper bag and we fill the diaper bag with diapers and wipes and an extra uh, pair of clothing and, you know, all kinds of things in anticipation uh -huh. of... But we're not caught off guard. <laughs> Correct. So we do understand this idea of anticipatory guidance mm -hmm. <laughs> as parents. And that's all we're doing here with behavior. Yes. So we're trying to fill that, <laughs> that bag mm -hmm. with anticipatory guidance when it comes to temperament and behavior. Yes. I'm totally excited. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So like, all right. We understand what temperament is. It's that pattern of behavior. We understand that our job, like it's not going to change. 
So our job is to kind of help our kids develop tools and strategies and how we respond so they can navigate the world with their temperament. And we need to consider our own goodness of fit, right? So like maybe our traits are alike in a way that's troublesome or maybe they're different. And so it's hard to understand each other. So we understand these things about temperament. So where, where do I start? Like, okay, I believe you. Temperament's important. Okay, it's cool. So what do, what do I do now? <laughs> so like I said, almost all professionals and educators who follow Chess and Thomas, they have the same kind of thoughts and, and ideas about this idea that we all get a certain amount of specific temperament traits. All right. So we all get all the traits. Mm -hmm. It then becomes this idea of sifting and sorting out. Well, how much of these traits did we get? And as we look at children and we look at these traits, we kind of have to decide where do they fall on this continuum? So mm -hmm. I like to think of, you know, the left side is the side with less L for left and less. Mm -hmm. And then the right hand side is um, more or higher. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you just a little quick, quick and dirty uh, scenario of the traits. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's nine temperament traits, according to Chess and Thomas. And I want you to think about either of your children while I name all nine traits. And what I want okay. you to do is I want you to think about how much of this particular trait did that child get? Did they get a little or did they get a lot? Okay. All right. Activity level, action, activity level, a little or a lot adaptability to change how adaptable are they a little or a lot are they approaching to something new or novel or do they withdraw approaching or withdrawing how persistent are they how persistent are they when it comes to tasks how about their distractibility? Are they getting very distracted or not too distracted? All right. Intensity level. We've kind of talked a little bit about that. Did they get a little bit of intensity or a lot of intensity? All right. Okay. How if people about, have been following along, they might know where I think I fall on that. Yeah. <laughs> How about sensitivity? And you mentioned the senses. So did they get... Are they sensitive to the senses or not very much? And then one of my favorite is, well, they're all my favorite. Okay. So <laughs> regularity or rhythmicity. And, and in all honesty, this is how I describe this one. Regularity. How much did they get? Are they, when it comes to eat, sleep, and poop, are they regular <laughs> same time every day or not regular? And then the last one is mood. And mm -hmm. in mood, we talk about positive and negative. Now I want you to think about this instead, silly or serious. Mm -hmm. All right. So what stuck out at you or what jumped out at you in those nine traits? So I feel like I tend to talk more about my daughter and her temperament, more, mostly because I've had a little more time to observe hers. Um, so I'm going to go the other route and actually go with my littlest. And so thinking about a lot or a little, the ones that jumped out at me is like, oh, yeah. Um, I would say my son is like highly regular, um, that he is like pretty natural. I can expect when he's going to get tired or literally on like maternity, like later maternity leave and, you know, first getting back to work with him, I'd be like, he'd cry. And I'd look at the clock like, oh, he, he's hungry. Like he knew, you know, he knew the time almost. So I would say he's highly regular. A trait he maybe didn't get as much of, I would guess. And again, I, I haven't done a lot of this stuff, gotten their profiles done or anything. Um, I would guess he's lower on sensitivity. Doesn't seem to, you know, like sleeps through loud noises um, doesn't really seem to like struggle with when things are loud or that's my guess. That's my, that's, those are my best guesses. Do you have anything that comes to mind with yours? Uh, so with my three girls, I would say that I have one that is, uh, has less activity level, mm -hmm. like not very active. It just means mm -hmm. that, you know what, she just, she does things at a slower pace in terms of action and activity. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one that is very highly active. And then I think that uh, probably the other one, w another trait, if I did all three girls, would be uh, distractibility. So mm -hmm. 
uh, very distractible, you know, mm -hmm. send her off to do one thing and she comes back with six different things that she's thought of in the meantime. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now those are our kiddos. So I'm going to twist your brain okay. a little bit. Now I'm going to go through them again, fairly quickly this time. I want you to think about you, you, okay. your temperament traits. Okay. Activity level. Adaptability. Approach withdrawal, approaching or withdrawing. Persistence, intensity, distractibility, mood, positive or negative, sensitivity, and regularity. Okay. All right. So what jumped out at you there? Uh, so I... Uh... Yeah, as you've maybe heard, if you've listened to our podcast before, I tend to be intense. I feel things pretty strongly. <laughs> um, and so I would say I got a lot of intensity, um, which I think my daughter also has high intensity. Like, oh, wonder where she gets that. Um, <laughs> but then I would say, actually, you know, I said my son is pretty regular. I don't think I, like, I think I would have, like, low regularity. It's pretty, like, oh, I'm going to stay up late. All right. I mean, I might be a little tired the next morning, but then I'm okay. Or oh, I'm really busy right at noon, so I'm not going to eat right then. I'm going to wait till 2.30, and that's okay. Um, and so, yeah, I think that I maybe am a little bit low in regularity. Uh, I didn't maybe get so much of that. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So I shared that I have one daughter who is particularly less active, right? So on the opposite of that is high activity level, and I have another daughter who is highly active. And I would also say that me, myself, I am highly active, Mm -hmm. I'm always moving, et cetera, right? So in that case, the one daughter and I, we do things very quickly. And the mm -hmm. other daughter, we sometimes get frustrated with her because she's not moving as quickly as us. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things that we're going to look at over this whole season. So we're actually yeah. going to spend an entire episode in each of those nine traits, Mm -hmm. I'm so excited and it's almost it's honestly hard as we were like walking as we walk through this and introduce temperament I'm like I, I want to tell you okay uh -huh. we're gonna tell I you know, more right. right and but so the understanding of what it is and then understanding each trait I think hopefully that you can oh, and get a taste for yes you. we really we really want you to 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 get to the opportunity to think really deeply and long about these particular traits because our bottom line goal here is that there is no temperament shaming. There is no temperament mm -hmm. labeling. There is no temperament judging. We are who we are and we have this opportunity to learn more about ourselves, to learn more about our children and how both our behaviors and our reactions shape their behaviors and their reactions. Ooh. I remember, mm -hmm. I literally remember that my oldest daughter was one year old when I first started to learn about temperament. Mm -hmm. And I said to the trainer, I feel awful because there are some things that I know I did wrong. And she stopped me and she said, Lori, you didn't do things wrong. Your daughter is one even if your daughter were 21, the fact that you're learning about temperament allows you to begin again, mm -hmm. to wipe away the, the dirty edge of that window and all of a sudden see clearly. And we've talked about this before that it's okay for us to say, gosh, I'm sorry. Can we start again? Yes. You know, what do you, what is it? You, you tell your daughter, I need a, can we start over? <laughs> yeah. Can we start over? We start over. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. This is an opportunity to start where we're at, start learning about what makes them tick, what makes us tick, uh, and how to work together mm -hmm. with it. And I think we kind of, we were so excited to keep going. We kind of rolled right through. We usually wrap our, our start to wrap our, um, you know, podcast with our, what we call our, your reality or our strategy. And we ran right through it. It's, it's looking at your temperament and looking at your kids' temperament and learning to understand it a little better. Like what mm -hmm. are those patterns related to those nine traits we all get? Um, and so I do, I think that's 
oh, can we assign homework? Is that a thing you can do on a podcast? I think <laughs> like, so. Guys, listeners, this is your assignments. Um, no, but we would encourage you, like Lori said, there's tools out there that can help you better understand your temperament and um, and your kids' temperament to kind of clean off that window a little bit to understanding their behavior and those patterns a little bit more. Um, so yeah, as we dive into these traits, each of these traits a little more over the next few months that you'll maybe come in with a little context of where your kids are at and where you're at. Mm -hmm. I'm excited mm -hmm. for you to get your profiles back. I know. I can't wait. <laughs> it's hard to wait. So is I will that admit that. An thing? <laughs> I don't know. I will admit that I'm actually, um, not scared at all about, <gasps> you know, having oh. our stop, breathe, talk moment with our producer and, Maybe that's what scares me is but that I'm not scared, scared at all. <laughs> but this is the time of our podcast where we invite our producer in to ask us an off the question, off the cuff question. Uh, so when we do that, we don't know exactly what she's going to ask us, and uh, it just gives us a moment in our space to stop, breathe, talk. Mm. Yes. So it is once again time for it stop, breathe, talk, which, you know, as we've talked about temperament, we haven't talked about stop, breathe, talk much, but I think that as we go through different traits, that'll also come into play as we start to talk about how to um, help our children learn how to deal with different things as well. So just throwing that little stop, breathe, talk bit in there about, uh, mm -hmm. it hadn't been mentioned, so I had to mention it. Yes. Um, as you were talking, sorry, I'm going to make this about me for a second. I was processing like, okay, you guys are sharing what you think your temperament traits are. I don't have any kids myself. I have a niece and nephews that I kind of start to think about this, but I was thinking that, so our science of parenting listeners know, um, we've learned as a group that Mackenzie and Lori are very adaptable. <laughs> Just a fact, right? Mackenzie J, me. Mackenzie J <laughs> and Lori are very adaptable. If something comes up, they're like, yeah, let's do it. Like, change? Sure. Forward, change yeah. it. <laughs> and usually I'm the one going, guys, 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 guys. I mean, maybe it's partially because I'm a producer and I'm like, let's think about this and this and this and this. But I'm like, no, give me a minute. I need to think about it. So I'm very interested in hearing more about that as well for my own, you know, knowledge. But I'm sure that'll come into play with parents as well as they go. So in case anyone was wondering, I'm not I'm a little slow to adapt sometimes, but <laughs> it's not about me. The question we, for you we guys. Still, we still love you <laughs> so very much. It's wonderful. Whew, thank goodness. <laughs> so my question today is really kind of an overarching. You, you've talked about it a little bit of, um, you know, your takeaways on temperament, this sort of thing. I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to take a second through all of your time learning about temperament or, you know, Mackenzie, you're a little newer to temperament. Lori's been doing temperament for quite a long time. As you're reading and talking to the researchers, what is one aha moment or one takeaway that you want the listeners to keep in mind as they go throughout this season and l learn and listen about temperament? Hmm. It's like, it's such a good question that I'm like, oh, I gotta, like, I wanna say, oh, I wanna say something. <laughs> I wanna so be good. really eloquent. I really wanna yeah. be eloquent, right? I, I honestly, I think that each person that we've talked to, and I think we've talked to half a dozen, if not more right now, mm -hmm. um, and we've been asking them that question. You know, wh when we talk about temperament, what do you really want our listeners to hear? Right. And they, pretty much across the board have said the same thing. And that is as parents, we do the best we can with the information that we have at the time. And when it comes to temperament, the opportunity to suddenly begin to understand your child boosts your self-confidence and your not your not only your self-esteem your child's self-esteem that a couple of the folks we've talked to have said you know there have been parents who literally have come back crying and said thank you thank you for helping me understand how i can work on this relationship with my kid and it could be a little kid it could be a big kid it could have been their partner um you, you know their partner may have a different temperament than they do and they don't see eye to eye on how to, you know, 
guide their child. And so that idea that as parents, we have this opportunity to take in information about temperament and put it into practice immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. Okay. So like Kenzie just threw us a softball and you like knocked it out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what can I say? <laughs> no. Um, the thing that does come to mind for me is, um, you know, in one of the classes we've taught about temperament, there's this phrase, what is wonderful? Um, mm -hmm. And so thinking about each trait and yeah, that the stage my child's in right now, this might feel particularly challenging, um, but like what's wonderful about it? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the idea of Barb talking about like what's, you know, thinking of it as a gift and sometimes people, we might tend to label certain temperament as like difficult or hard or, um, but it really does come down to our own and how they fit together. And so always keeping that in mind and not that we'll never feel frustrated or those things, but um, keeping in mind that there are really wonderful things about your child, even if it's different from you, even if it was challenging for you with a similar trait, mm -hmm. um, what's wonderful. Mm, so. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. We need a, we need a bumper sticker. What's wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. <laughs> I love that. So mm. that's what we are going to be doing for the next four months. We are going mm -hmm. to really take a look, uncover, uh, dive deep into those nine traits. And then, oh, I'm so excited. We are going to do some special topics. Mm. We're going to talk about sleep for a whole episode. We are going to talk about the shy inhibited child for a whole episode. We're going to talk about that spirited and feisty child for a whole episode. So you are going to want to stick with us. And oh we God. have a lot to cover. But I do have just one more thing to say to you. And that is that now that you know temperament, mm. <laughs> it is your responsibility it is your responsibility. So you're the adult. So as always, thank you for joining us today on our Science of Parenting podcast. Of course, you can remember to subscribe to our weekly audio podcast or watch us um, on video each week. Or uh, every once in a while, you can catch us live on Facebook where we take your comments and questions. So come along as we tackle the ups and downs, the ins and the outs, and the research and reality of the science of parenting. The Science of Parenting is a research-based education program hosted by Lori Haynes and Mackenzie Johnson, produced by Mackenzie DeYoung with research and writing by Barbara Dunn Swanson. Send in questions and comments to parenting at I-A-S-T-A-T-E dot E-D-U and connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. This program is brought to you by Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. For the full non-discrimination statement or accommodation inquiries, go to www.extension.iastate.edu slash diversity slash ext.